Hey guys, you're looking at the, the factory floor, if you will, of a big project that I'm working on. This is um, now that in Foundry, we can build in, in vertical levels. I am working on a, a really cool thing where you can build really unlimited inns, taverns, shops, and other things within Foundry. And I'm assembling those assets here in Dungeon Draft. And so we're going to talk through a tutorial today on how to do floors. I'm going to use all of these different areas of these assets that I've created. We're going to look at uh, techniques that I use to create more interesting spaces. And then you can use these techniques yourself. We're specifically focusing on floors today because it's one of the areas where you can improve your maps considerably just with a few techniques. You guys have seen my shadows tutorial shadow and light you can see i'm using a bunch of these different lighting effects and other stuff here but today we're going to talk about floors how did i create these floors how can you use different techniques to make your floors work better and so you know why does it matter they they look if you do your floors right it makes your maps look more real more lived in more believable more interesting keeps you away from those big monolithic floors that you when you look at your map go why does this thing look so plain and ordinary i'm going to show you just some easy ways to break up the the plain and ordinary and do things that are a lot more extraordinary as far as design goes we're even going to talk about how to use not just floor overlays and effects we're going to talk about how to use the terrain tool to be able to create more interesting floors like you saw in that that fighting pit back there and, you know, as you see in this herbalist shop, we've got this really interesting, very realistic looking floor. I'm going to show you how to create this using the terrain tool. And all of these assets that I'm designing here end up getting cut out and put into foundry in sort of modular pieces. So you're just looking at the factory and I have quite a few examples that I can walk you through today. I encourage you, if you see something that you like or a technique that you think is really helpful, you can make what's called a short in YouTube now, and you can cut out up to 60 seconds of time, and you can create a short that lets other people see what you thought was notable and link to it, and then be able to come back to that later. So I'm gonna timestamp everything so you guys can get through it and jump around and use this video as a reference. But I encourage all of you, if you, if you think something needs to be called out and made its own little one minute video, by all means, please do so. I hope I've created this in such a way that lets you guys do that. But without further ado, we're going to jump into the tutorial. So the first things first, you've got to get the right assets in order to do more with your floors. Now you guys know that I use Forgotten Adventures assets and you'll see that I've got the latest Forgotten Adventures dungeon draft assets here. I'm going to link to them as I always do in my uh, description of the video. You do have to be a Patreon to get um, all the overlay uh, effects and things like that, but it's well worth it if you're going to do a lot of designing, especially in my style within Dungeon Draft. I also have Tom Cartos assets I use quite heavily. In this case, for, for my purposes today, I'm going to have his floor assets that I'm going to use um, uh, for some of the floor tutorials I'm going to give you. So you may want to pick those up as well. You do have to be a Patreon of his to use some of those, but you can use the techniques I'm going to show you today without them. And then if you know AOA and you've picked up any of his stuff, he uh, his things are available for free on cartographyassets.com. I'll link to them as well. Uh, we may use some of the clouds and water assets and you'll, you'll find fire and electricity, scorch and burn. These are all very, very helpful things that you can use. We have some other things that we've created in the Bailiwicky family. Zephyr's got a cracks, paths and patterns tool that's very helpful for distressing things and then i've got uh, and you can pick those up patrons can pick those up from us through the bailey patreon and then i've got a, a number of other things that i use um that we we may or may not use today in the tutorial but just fyi this this whole file that you're seeing is available to patreons and they can come in and customize what i've already built or use this as a jumping on point or just a learning tool um, but you will need the uh, the assets that that i publish for 
uh, this type of thing as well because this a lot of these maps were made with those assets too so with that once you have all those installed go ahead and create your new map and then i'll walk you through how to do some of these things so the first thing we're going to talk about is just how to break up spaces and how to use these floor patterns in more interesting ways to do more interesting things as part of the basics remember that you can always change the color so this particular floor pattern is part of the forgotten adventures pack and i've set the color here so normally it comes in this color and i just darkened it and i darkened it enough to where it, it was gave just kind of an interesting maybe a darker maybe like a mahogany type of look and what i did was you can see this is at level 100 then i took this pattern and i put it on top so all i did was simply just go to my pattern shape tool i selected my polygon and then i went to uh, this thing right here and you can just simply draw polygons let me turn my grid on i've got snap to grid snap to grid helps you just make sure that you're drawing proper points and i just drew that polygon and i drew it at level 100 as well on top of this floor before if you have trouble with your floors, you start to stack them. Remember, you can always select it and you can say bring to front or send it back. It'll simply, it'll keep it on the same layer, but it will move it before or behind other things of its type on that layer. So keep in mind, you can use that to manipulate things. But already with this room, I've got some interesting floors. This room above here, I've used the carpet tool. So I can come up here again to my pattern shape tool, my polygon selected. I can come down here to this carpet, which is sort of a dull gray, but it's nice because it lets you color it really anything you want. Let's make it a red carpet. And I will, remember you can use your spline tool. So if I hold down shift, so right now I've, I've selected my first point, and then I hold down shift and I select my next point, and then I let go of shift and it lets me now move this spline around. I'll do that there. I'm gonna hold down shift again over here i'm right clicking or left clicking sorry holding down shift holding down shift and clicking again and then connecting them up now i've got a nice red carpet keep in mind you can even change the direction of this carpet as well of the grain of the carpet if you will just to make things look a little bit different you can see i've used two carpets in this case one sitting on top of the other just to create some variability and some difference Another thing you can do with carpet and other floor types is you can see this carpet is surrounded by a wibbly wobbly line. That's a path here. So if I go into my paths, set myself at level 100, and I'll look for my wibbly wobbly line. It's hard to find, but just as a hint, if you're using the Forgotten Adventures pack, you're looking for these little, um, what are these, walkways? And it's usually right around the walkway. Wibbly wobbly line is right there. And if I draw it out, I can see if it's the right width. Maybe I'll make it a little bit thicker. And this also uses the spline tool. So if I hold down shift and I click, it lets me force that curve. A lot of us don't know that. I didn't realize that for the longest time. I'm just clicking and holding down shift when I come to a curve. It forces that. And now I've connected it. And now I've got a nice carpet that I've created from scratch. Here's another example of how to use creative floors. This is that same floor that I just showed you. I'll just show you its color. This one's quite a bit darker. So I brought it all the way down to here. I wanted a really dark thing. This is a armor shop. Some other creative things that you can do here though is you can see there's sort of like natural tiling and design in the floor. So I wanted to take advantage of that. There's an object. If you search for a statue, you find these statue bases. This one happens to be made of uh, gold. I used that statue base as an object that I wanted as basically a tile that I just put onto this, this floor. I put it down low enough that it would fall underneath some of the shadows and things like that. So you see this is 100 below water. I don't have any terrain in these maps. These are all, these all get cut out later. So I'm able to put these lower. So everything's sitting below the water line. Just give me a little extra space to build and stack things on top of it. That's how I use those. And then this is a path essentially. And this path is really easy to find. It's also in Forgotten Adventures. Go to your path tool. I'm going to go to level negative 100 like I did the others. 
I'm going to look for all these pipes. And in these pipes, I have these brass pipes. And in these brass pipes, the very last one is called a tiny pipe. I'm going to bring this down in size a little bit and just see. So what this does is it lets you put these little interesting gold inlays into your floors. So here's an example of how I used to pipe. I can make this even smaller if I want it just to be a very subtle inlay. And that's how I did all of these inlays around here. Again, just take you're taking the raw materials in front of you and making something totally different out of it. Remember also one way to just quickly improve your floors is just change the orientation. So this floor is set at 45 degrees. It comes at zero degrees. That's interesting, but not that interesting. For a room like this, where I feel like it's a little bit opulent, they're gonna they're gonna hire the uh, stone masons to lay down a more interesting floor. So just changing the orientation gives you something different to work with. You can see down here in the weapons shop, this is the lower level of the shop above it, or at least in a modular way, you could stack them if you want to. And this one comes with the same treatment to the floor. You can see I've also just put in things like this. This is just a Forgotten Adventures asset. If you look for, um, let's look for engrave. And you find these magic circles here. And these are great for just setting down big empty spaces and making it look like something was etched into that space. Create something interesting for players to look at. Maybe there's something magically protecting this, this particular space. That's why they have, they can have everything sitting out, but you just put little things like that subtly around your map and you've got, you've got automatically some interesting things going on on your floors. Remember to try to vary up your, your rooms. This room has a stone floor right next to one with a wood floor. If I zoom in on the stone floor, I'm doing some other creative things here. Here's, uh, you can see some overlay. I'm going to talk about these in just a second. This happens to be a cloud overlay. If I dig down here and move stuff out of the way, I can eventually get to my floor. This floor is a stone floor, but you can see what I've done. I've got these extra pieces here that are doing something, right? So here's a piece. What this is, is it's a, also in Forgotten Adventures, they've got some shadow patterns. Shadow patterns are buried down here. You've got 20%, 40%, and 60% shadow patterns. This is 60%. The way you do these is you go into your pattern shape tool, select your polygon. If it's your polygon, you may, you may be able to do, you can also do this with um, tiles, regular square tiles. I've turned off snap to grid, so now I can move around freely. And I'm at level 100, that should be good enough for what we need to do here. And I'm just going to generally trace this, this tile here. And that gives me the ability to make it look like maybe that tile is missing. When you're zoomed out, it definitely looks like the tiles are missing. That's how you can, again, break up space. You can make this sort of monolithic tile space look like it's missing some pieces. Here's another, just a decoration. This is just, if I move this floor out of the way, this is just the same. Uh, this happens to be uh, something different. I didn't use the that tool. I used the blank pattern. So a lot of people don't realize you can use this pattern. So for example, I might say, and what, what's great about that pattern is you can color it. So I'm going to go to my polygon again. I'm going to select my blank pattern and I'm going to color it, let's say red, and then I'm going to make it slightly transparent. You'll see me use this a lot and we'll show some techniques, some other techniques that use this, but I can just simply make a pattern. Now I'm holding down my spline tool on these curves and I've now created this pattern overlaid on top of my floor. So it lets you create decorations on the floor and break things up. Now let's talk about using some overlay assets like this cloud that you saw me moving here, or this, this is a, just a little piece of smoke. This just lets you put imperfections in your floor. Maybe there was a spill here. Maybe there was something burned and fell on the floor, but you can see I've added these little imperfections. If this was sitting where it was supposed to be, these little imperfections, you lay them in the cracks and you, you, it's very subtle but it just creates these, these imperfections. Here's another one 
that as players are walking through it, it just feels more organic, their whole space. So the way you find these is you go into your object tool, search for smoke, and you get all these different overlays. Here's those overlays I was talking about. You can't see them very well on the screen, but once you find them, you just, you know, blow them up, put them where you want. You can put them on tables and things like that, and it just helps create those imperfections. So let's look at some other examples of how to break up some spaces, and then we'll go into some of these imperfections. So this is a casino. It's uh, There's the tellers, and you've got your different casino sort of areas here. This is designed also to be modular, so I can cut this casino into quarters, and you would only you could only have you could have a small casino sort of at the top of or built into a any particular tavern or you could have the entire casino or just you know one of these quarters two of these quarters connected together so that's why it's designed this way but you can see what i did with the floors here i took the overall floor because it's really easy to build one big monolithic floor so i took the overall floor and i set it at a 45 degree angle just to make it a little bit interesting and then i put these special paths in here and all these are is really just to, to make a trim on the floor so the way that i did it is i went into my path tool and i'm going to look for my this is forgotten adventures again i'm going to look for my roof pieces so here's like a like roof trim well on the roof trim in the very beginning you have ashen light and dark and I'm going to use these in the same way that I used the paths in the other uh, with those gold paths. So you can see I can just draw trim right across any area. And what I did was I just crisscrossed trim and it gives me this nice sort of designed floor. I even let that trim come across these dark areas just to kind of unite everything together. Um, and then, you know, here's the trim again in these, in these, uh, this darker area. I didn't run over this because that would look weird for wood trim to be running over stone like that. But I did, um, I did outline this stone area in trim all to keep the whole thing just kind of tied together. You can see I did some of my carpet tricks here. I used a, a darker purplish carpet on top of a red carpet. And, and that's, again, just more ways to make your, your maps more interesting. Here, I'm obviously, I'm using um, stone inlay just to kind of break up the space and kind of establish it as its own space. And I've used, you know, the darker wood here and here. You can see I've also played with elevation. So it's another way to break up your spaces is to change the elevation. In this case, I'm using these stair pieces. And I put those stairs right on top. There's actually two stairs. I had, a, I had another stair I was experimenting with underneath. You can ignore that for this. But I'm using stairs to basically make this space broken up and more interesting. It's slightly lower for these, uh, what are these, poker tables. So here's some other things that I've done interesting with, with a, a space. Here's that same floor that I used before. But then I took this, this marble tile. In this case, it's this green marble tile. And I colored it slightly purplish. And it created this interesting design. And, but I didn't like how the design had the purple around it. So then I took another path and I just outlined the design just to kind of make it a little bit darker. You may not go to this level of detail. I certainly don't expect you to. But these are things that you can do to just kind of create the floor that you want versus the floors that you're offered in the assets. Did the same thing here. Here's the normal floor. I think I colored it slightly darker. And then I've got this green tile that's, uh, that's not colored anything different around the edges of it. This is another technique. It's outlining your spaces. So if you find that you have a large room, and it's just too monotonous and you're not quite sure how to break it up, try creating an outline around it. So a lot of times in interior design, they will, uh, they will put these, you know, tiled outlines or stone outlines around a wood floor or vice versa. And it gives you a nice way to break it up and establish sort of the edges of the room. And it makes it feel like a, like a smaller, 
a more intimate space, but it still gives you all the same like range of motion and things like that that you would be looking for. Here's an example of an office. This office has a meeting room. You can see I've used the same techniques with the, uh, the wood trim. I've got the same technique of a surrounding border of tile. Here's something bad happening in that room. Here I've got a technique, the same, same technique that you've seen where we're using, get some of these out of the way. We've just created a polygon of wood and that's surrounded by this polygon of white tile. Let me show you how to make one of these complicated polygons, by the way. Let's just use, um, let's just use this white tile again. I've got my polygon created. Let me turn on my grid. I've got snap to grid turned on. So I'm going to start drawing this polygon, but let's say I want to have a hole cut in the middle. Well, before I finish it, so if I finish it, I don't get to cut my hole or I, I could, I'll show you another technique. Before I finish it, I'll just stop short. Before it turns green, I'll stop short, I'll put a pin a point there, and I'll start drawing this other direction. And you can even do curves. So I'm going to use my spline tool and curve here. And since I haven't closed my polygon, it hasn't turned green yet, I can keep drawing. So now I'm going to put another point there and I'll close it. And that gives me this really cool polygon that I could put something else in the middle and do some interesting things with. Let's say that you forgot to do that. Let's say you didn't cut your polygon out. If I go to edit points and I put a point here and another point here, I've now broken that up and I can draw a polygon here. I can't draw my circle, but if I just put a point there and point there, I can at least make a cutout where I didn't originally plan on having it. This is how you can go back through old maps and start to change them around. You can create polygons. You can simply just, you know, draw on top of your polygon, something else, something like this, and you can create more interesting spaces that way. Now let's look at this theater. We're going to use some of the techniques we just saw, and we're going to add some more techniques to it. This theater in the same way that the others like the casino are set up is set up as quadrants. So this piece can cut out and be put into a tavern, um, or you can add more space to it, or you can build out all four. The curtains will be added within foundry. That's why the curtains are missing. And you're just sort of seeing the backstage area and ways to go downstairs and things like that. But let's examine what I did to improve this space, because when this space first started, it was one big monolithic floor, right? It looked like, let's just show you what, what it would have looked like. Right, so it would have looked like something like this. And that's just too much wood and, and open space, and we can make that a lot more interesting. Let me walk you through some of those techniques I used. First of all, you can see that I took the entire floor and I made it darker, considerably darker. And then I put it at a 45 degree angle. And that took my floor and already made it kind of interesting. And then I took and created, went to my polygon tool, pattern shape tool, polygon, same floor type, set to, let's say, level 100. And this time I did not change the orientation of it. Let me turn snap to grid back on. So I'm snapping to my grid and I just drew a floor, a trim around it like this. And you can draw it all the way around. Or you can draw it in pieces. Maybe I just want to draw this one for right now. And that created this trim and this walkway and it changed the orientation. So it looked like maybe different types of wood were used. And then I took my path tool. And I went and found my, my ashen wood edge. There's also a darker version of it, if you'd like to use that. And I drew all of my, my paths here. So I'm just clicking and drawing paths and that creates my trim. And then I set it to over and I set all of my trim around these spaces. And so now I've essentially defined the space and I've broken it up and I've used different shades of wood. And now it's looking more interesting than when it started. Another tactic that I use is this 
um, you know, I, I changed the wood type so that in, in the orientation, so the stage really stood out and separated from the other uh, lower area. But then I also used my path tool and I'll set it to about 50%. I'll set it to one if I'm drawing shadows under walls, but I'll set it to 50% if it's something lower than that. And I'll come down here to my path tools. You can't see them very well. Let's see if I can get this. So these shadow paths are for uh, are inside of Forgotten Adventures. I'm using the 40% half path. That means that there's not two sides to it, but only one side. The other side is a hard edge. I'm going to take that 40%. I'm going to come up to, just so you can see, it'll come up to like level 400. And I'll just draw that path straight across here. And that path, you see, creates more separation between the upper stage and everything lower than it. So it creates separation from the floor, from the tables, and they all look like they're sitting down lower than the top of the stage. I took those paths away, you can see the separation goes away. There's actually a few paths sitting here that I it just kept drawing over them until I was happy with the separation. But you can see the separation is very, very faint here. This doesn't even look like it's separated at all. It looks like there's no distance at all. So this is just a way of playing with, again, your elevations to break your space up, make it look more believable and more interesting. The other thing that's happening in this map, see if I hover with my select selector over this area, you can see there's strange things that I'm selecting, right? In this case, you can barely see it, but it's a faint cloud, essentially, that's semi-transparent. Uh, some of you have seen me use this technique before, but this is really important. What we're using here, so we're gonna go to the scatter tool, we'll stay at level 100, We'll turn our shadows off and we're going to search for cloud. And we're going to have all these clouds show up. Some of these are with Forgotten Adventures. Some of them were, are with AOA's um, uh, assets. And when we have that cloud selected, we don't like this color. So we're going to go in and use some custom colors. Now I already have some created. But I'll make one for you right now, just on the fly. Let's make a new color. It doesn't really matter which. Let's say we want it to be maybe like kind of a little sandy. So we'll do something like that. And then we'll drop its opacity. Maybe something like here. If you keep the opacity up, it'll be a bigger, darker stain. If you drop it down lower, it'll be lighter and more subtle. You may find reasons to use both in a given map that you're, that you're working with. Let's select some of these. These are all semi-transparent colors, variations of black and things like that. And the next thing I'm going to do is, is make my scale a little bit wider. I'm going to have some of these be very large patches and some of them be very small. And I'll just kind of put it somewhere over here and I'll set it down. And that just gives me some variation in my wood. If you look around the room that you're in right now, you look at the floor, even if it's a very, I'm in a room with a, with a consistent carpet. It's very clean carpet, but there's still all sorts of variations in it, whether it's from shadows or dirt or spills. Um, even very subtle things, there's variations. So these help you create spaces that are more believable. Even this right here might be might be that light is landing on that spot a little bit differently than others. Maybe there was something spilled on it. Maybe it was how the cleaning agents they used. Here's you know here's another one where it's just a big dark heavy spot. Your players won't really notice these things because you you don't notice it. Even in, I've used a lot of these in this map that you're looking at right here, and all it does is is really just kind of break up the space and make it look more real. You know, here's one of them. Just all over the place, different sizes. You're going for randomness, and it's the randomness that helps you make the spaces that that um, make the most sense. The more dark and the more you bunch them up, the more dirty your space looks. So here's a nice, dirty-looking uh, tavern floor. And you can even put them on top of things. So if I went to level 400, for example, I'll cover everything underneath it with that stain. And that can help you make your all of everything look dirty. This is probably a little too much. If you don't like what you're looking at now, you just hold down the select button and you rotate your mouse and it'll rotate to the next random choice. It'll, it's randomly picking a color and it's randomly picking, picking one of the cloud assets that we had selected. And 
I'll just keep holding down shift and rotating my mouse until I like what I'm what I've got and I'll set that down. You can change these to pinks and purples and blues and you can make magical effects and things like that. Here in this fighting pit, I'm using the same technique to mess it up. I want this to look like it's covered in who knows, dirt, sweat, blood, everything else many fights over a period of time you can see i've added it on top of this wood here just to make the wood look more distressed you can use this technique everywhere to make things look more distressed and more interesting just to go through some of your other options though if i go to my objects tool and i get to my fa assets i'm going to look for overlay patches and that's what we have here you have overlay effects, which are things like moss that you can color, which are super helpful with a lot of different types of builds. And then you've got overlay patches. These are, let's just kind of run through some of these. Here's ice. So ice, yes, you could certainly use it for ice, um, but you can find that this is very helpful in a lot of circumstances. It looks like dirt and you can um, color this. You can spam it on top of it itself and, and you can use this for different effects. You've got other types. Here's smoke that, again, is very helpful. I've used smoke in a lot of different capacities. Um, if I go up here, you've got this grunge overlay. Let me show you an example of this in action. So this is a necromancer's shop. And there's, you know, there's different things going on here. There's a back room where he's actually... Uh, creating uh, magical items potentially here's here's something where it might be a display where he brings out some things that you might be interested in and then here's where his main shop is and this shop has all of these you know um, shelves that have you know I put little circles and things in here to make it interesting I'll show you where some of these assets are and it's got these skulls that have these are Tom Carto's skulls and they've got candles on them and those candles are dripping wax and so i used this overlay that you just saw to create that dripping wax effect i just colored it the right color and then if you spam it a couple times it makes it look like there's some buildup of wax so everything you see on the floors here is just this overlay um, colored the uh, the right way and creating these puddles of wax so the wax drips down onto the floor and it just sort of accumulates over time I've used some of these other overlay effects uh, on the floor to make it more interesting. Let me just show you where some of these are. So if you look up, for example, uh, Magic Circle, you'll get all these Magic Circles from Forgotten Adventures. Some of them are blood, some of them are colorable, and then some of them are engraved. So here's an engraved circle, for example. And I can put that engraved circle on the ground. I can put it on other surfaces and it just looks like something was engraved on that surface there's other circles that let you do these things that look like maybe they were rubbed out a little bit maybe they're older but that's just some techniques to improve this floor you can see i'm using some of those clouds that i showed you before i'm using some darker stains just an example of you know, what i've showed you is possible here I've cut out some different pieces using different floors overlaid on each other. I'm using the shadow path tool to, to separate this floor from the floor right below it. So again, you're just using the shadow path tool. You're shrinking it down really small. And it creates a shadow just like that. So this is just those shadows. And then I have the wibbly wobbly line running on top of all of it just to help finish the line and help it make it look like its own sort of you know, unique piece. But I've got other pieces underneath here. If I move some of the stuff out of the way, and this is a very complex scene, there's a lot of stuff here. You can see I've used some of those overlay effects to create this sort of magical um, fire coming out from below. I'm using quite a bit of the special lighting. I've created these different cutouts. Let's see if I can expose one of these for you. Oh, here's another technique. Uh, this is set at level 400. It's just a, um, I 
think it's a 60% opacity. Let's say 40% opacity. So this is how you can drop the light level of a single room. And you see when I put it over everything, it kind of gives me a darker stone, which is what I wanted. I wanted to make everything a little bit darker. But it's kind of hard to get all of these things out of the way for you. There's my stone floor. Here's my other stone floor that I used that technique earlier to create a polygon around it. And then I've got even, this is a Tom Cartos asset under here, if I can get to it. This is just another floor type. Sorry, a lot's happening here. Oh, here's a trick. Go to your filter, turn everything off except for patterns. Turn your filter back on. And now you can skip all those other things and just grab this pattern. Here's a pattern, for example, from Tom Cartos. If I scroll down, you can see the name of it. And he calls it, see TC is Tom Cartos Nebula Purple. So a great little thing for a magical effect that you can add to your maps. Here's some more creative things with floors. This floor I designed, you can see with my polygon, it's got a hole cut out in the middle of it. And this floor is at level 100. There's another floor immediately around it that is just there to make break it up and make it a little more interesting. It's got a path around it to trim it off. But then inside where that hole is, I have Basically a bunch of, let me get my selector tool out. Let's just actually just go for objects. Inside of this, I just have all of these um, cliff components. And they get smaller and smaller, and they go down deeper and deeper. And then I even have a pattern inside here. It's just, uh, this is set at level negative 100. It's just one of those um, shadow patterns. And it's just to help darken the interior of this hole so it looks like it gets darker and darker as it goes down. Also on this map, you can see I've used some of these overlay effects. So this floor is this floor, but it's got this overlay effect on top of it. And that's, that's these... Um, uh, you know, distressed sort of wood effect. You can find that by going into your pattern shape tool. Again, this is Forgotten Adventures. Go down to, uh, I think these are them. Yeah, wood damage. So this is wood damage overlay one. And if you put this down, it will, it'll create these little imperfections of wood damage. You can play around with these by making them darker. You can even make them semi-transparent. Sometimes that can give you a better look depending on what you're going for. You can see these are a little bit darker than you saw before. You can also change the orientation of these just like you do with the wood. So if your wood's at 45 degree angle, you can change this to 45 degree angle and the imperfections will match up with the, the grain and the boards and things like that. Just to talk about some other overlays while we're at it, this is a really helpful one. This is a wet mud puddles overlay. You can see if I just draw it somewhere, it's not that interesting, but one special attribute that it has is you can drop it down here to a very dark gray and then you can lower its opacity and when you put this down on the floor it creates this modeled sort of old look and you can play around with its opacity and things like that but i've actually used it here around this fireplace i've used that exact asset to make this stone look a little bit more distressed, a little bit older, like it's been around a lot of heat for a long time. Another really good, another really good overlay is this square tiles overlay. If I use it here, for example, you can see here it, it creates um, sort of a tiled effect. doesn't really work well on this. You need it more for like where you have square tiles. Let's see if I have an example. Here we go. So in this room here, if I wanted this room to look a little bit older, I could put these square tiles. Now that, that looks interesting, right? It's a little bit more broken up. But what if we did it this way? 
maybe the middle of the room gets used a lot more often. And so any imperfections in the height of the tile were, were fixed over time in the middle of the room as people walk over it. So what I'm going to do is draw a polygon around the edges of the room. Wait till it turns green. And now I've got this nice flat center. The edges have this more imperfect sort of variation between one tile to the next. You can use this technique to make very, very old looking tiles. Uh, you combine it with something like the technique that I just showed you with the mud. Let's just make the whole thing muddy. And now we've got a, a much older looking room. You can even go into the room itself and change the, the color, the darkness of the underlying tiles. Now I've got something that's very old, very interesting, could be in a dungeon, something like that. Here's another example of just variations. You, know, you can see I've, I've changed the orientation of this wood. I've distressed it versus the wood around it. Here's a way to make custom trim. So you can see this piece here. This is just a normal pattern shape. In this case, let me select it and I'll show you. So this pattern shape is wood. There's a special kind of pattern shape though. You can see up here when your woods start, there's this pattern that doesn't have boards, it just has lines. And so I created this pattern. I just drew it on the thing here. Let me get to it. So here's that pattern sort of expanded out a little bit. And but I only wanted one board. So I drew the pattern so that it was vertical, right? Its orientation was a certain way. In this case, zero. And then I moved. If you take snapped grid off, I moved these points all the way back until I just had that board sort of defined there. And that gave me this sort of custom piece of trim. This piece is the same thing up here. Let's see if I can grab it. Let's go to my filter. This is the same thing. But this one is set to 90 degrees, so I changed the orientation so the boards are going the other way. And if I expand this out, there's a lot of pieces here. You can see it's just multiple boards and then brought down to, to there again. I used my same technique with my shadow paths going around, and I created this sort of stage that looks like it's sitting up above everything else. And I do some other things like, you know, I put some pipe uh, path around underneath the stage to make it look like it was trimmed out in maybe like a rusted metal. And then I just put a lantern, a kind of a rusted lantern here to make it look like maybe there was some hardware or some decoration. I missed it on that side. Some hardware decoration here. I've got that twisted metal thing just to make it look a little bit more finished and tied in with some of the uh, the lights that I used here on the on the upper level, this lights above, it should be below this little piece here. Uh, before I go on, I just want to talk about carpets. So I tend to do carpets after I've done everything else because I end up putting shadows underneath all of these objects, as you guys have seen me do with shadows. And then the carpets I will put underneath all of those things. And I found it's just easier to place them if uh, if I've put all of my shadows down first and make sure that the carpet ends up underneath the shadow. Otherwise you end up having to wrestle with like what layer it is exactly. These, these carpets are, are buried. These are happen to be um, fur rugs. They're, these are forgotten adventures assets. They're buried underneath there. But I just do those last um, just to kind of finish off the room. All of these carpets here were all put in later and last as far as my my process goes. Okay, so now I want to show you how to use the terrain tool to actually create really, really interesting floors. If I go up to my terrain tool here, my terrain brush, and I turn it off, you can see there's actually not a floor here. I did something similar in this, uh, this shop here, this herbalist shop. There's actually no floor sitting there. So what I did was I turned my terrain tool on 
and, and then I painted the floor that I wanted. So in this case, I used herringbone, which you can see on outside of here is my base. And then I used a herringbone dirty, right? So if I click over here, I go to my Forgotten Adventures, Artificial Terrains, I can find my herringbones and stuff like that in here. Used my dirty, sort of dirtied up a little bit, right? And I'll put it only in certain places. I want to sort of paint it in, but I don't want it to just completely replace it. And then I use this dirt. And what's great with, with Dungeon Draft is it'll, it, it knows the alpha setting. So you can fill in cracks and then you can do dirt around it. And you can see how it looks like, you know, these plants and things have a lot of dirt that they're sitting in that dirt's got onto the floor and it's made just for a dirty floor kind of situation. And you can add more terrains, uh, although it gives you a performance hit, um, but you can do more terrains. So I did the same thing over here in my fighting pit. I used cracked dirt on the middle here. I'll just show you, there's some cracked dirt. And then I switched to sand. And I started filling in some of that, kind of making it a little bit more subtle. I used sand around the edges, right? So it looks like maybe the sand is accumulated around the edges and in the middle it's a little bit more hard packed. And that just gives me a really believable, nice sort of sand fighting pit. And then of course I covered it with blood and other objects to break it up. And then I've got a shadow path running around the edges just to show that it's, it's deeper than this outside area. It's sort of set into the floor. Um, but that's how you use the train brush to make really, really cool and suggestive and um, detailed floors when you want to. The technique that you may want to want to use, let's say you don't want, so this is as light as this floor will ever get. right? So this floor is set to is as light as it will go and the acid itself is restricted to what it was designed in. But what if I want a lighter shade of wood? Well, that's where your empty or blank tool comes in. So here's the same wood. And then here is this other piece on top of it. So what is this piece? This is a blank pattern. It's set to a very light color and it's set to, I don't know, it's about 40% transparency. And that gives me this overlay that essentially just changes the hue or the color of whatever's underneath it. So if that's sitting there, and I move my wood back underneath, I now have a lighter shade of wood. So it unrestricts you from whatever the original artist had intended, and it lets you basically color any color that you want to. Here's another technique that you might want to use. So this is using some Tom Cartos assets. So in his floor assets, you can see I've, I've put down purple carpets and I've done a gold runner and, you know, I've, I've created, you know, sort of hole in the middle where you can see the wood floor. I've even uh, played around with my elevations, right? So these are just, um, get some of this stuff out of the way. This is just a floor piece and then it's got some of these transparent stairs kind of set up to make it all transparent. But if I go to my objects and if I go to my Tom Cartos objects, which are further down, so TC, and then if I find floors, I find these really, really neat assets. I use these all the time. Uh, like these assets, for example, these little gold and um, marble overlays that you can put as hardware and things. You can see I've got them sitting on the corners of these display cases. They're just very, very versatile assets that you can use. But you can see there's a lot of them. And there's even like this big round one and there's these uh, more dwarven type of assets. And you can put these into a floor just to make it more interesting. You can see I just kind of took this circled asset and I just kind of stuck it here in the corner because, uh, you know, theoretically this is like a, a jewelry shop. There's going to be some really ornate things sort of going on here. And I wanted to put a lot of gold embellishments and things throughout just to make this look um, you know, like it might be like a high-end jewelry type of store. So lastly, I'll just show you some, some few examples. This is from the actual castle uh, set. So this is not from the town, but this works with the, uh, the components I just showed you. But you can just see some of the techniques I mentioned here. We're using some of Zephyr's cracked uh, tiles pattern. It's an overlay pattern, but I'm just... I'm masking these tiles with with um, 
a cave floor, for example, to make, make it look like they're pulled out. You can see a lot of the same techniques here in these different rooms. Again, um, just being very strategic as far as where I'm putting overlays and how I'm doing everything together. Here's that modeled look that you saw again with more cracks. Just creative uses of different colors um, that that's that kind of um, uneven stone look. And then here's, you know, here's using the terrain layer to make some really cool stuff. I'm combining it with some of these other tone uh, stone overlays and and you can just you can see it makes just for a very believable, very dirty. You know, here's a here's a tile that I just pulled out and kind of made its own something. This is just a couple of pieces of tile that I just grabbed and then rotated and set on top of each other. So this kind of thing is uh, it's very useful in a lot of different places. Hopefully this helps you guys build, you know, even better and more interesting maps and looking forward to seeing in the comments if you have any other techniques that you think I missed. Be happy to um, teach each other and get better together. Thanks so much. And have fun making your maps.